and in real life we're called upon to compare fractions. The most important thing to remember probably when you're comparing fractions is that the larger the denominator, the smaller the number. It seems counterintuitive, but look at the size of the piece. When you have only an eighth of something, that's not a very big piece. Compare that to a fourth, that's only half of a fourth, smaller than a fifth. However, when you start combining multiple pieces, then it can be a little less obvious that an two eighths is smaller than, is actually larger than, a fifth. See that? Two eighths is actually larger than one fifth, although one eighth is clearly smaller. It's easy to compare fractions with a common denominator. Three eighths obviously is less than five eighths. Now, this is a good time to remember that this symbol that looks like an L reminds us of an L kind of tipped, stands for less. Can you read that? L-E-S-S, -S, less. It's the other way. It doesn't look like, at all like an L. Now, these two aren't too difficult to compare because you can see that one-third is twice as big as one-sixth, particularly if you can picture that in your mind. If you are going for the key lime pie and somebody says, would you rather have a sixth or a third, a sixth is half the size of a third. So that's not too difficult to compare. And you can see that four thirds is the same as eight sixths, particularly if you're very careful in marking the pieces. But things start getting more complicated when you're comparing something like thirds and fifths. And some people resort to dividing. Two divided by three is 0.66666, which you round to 0.67 or so. And three fifths will divide out perfectly to 0 0.6. So you can get the comparison. Here's that greater than sign that two thirds is greater than three fifths. But looking at it graphically, it's starting to get a little bit tricky and you have to be very careful in how you measured out all these little dividers to get an accurate comparison. Same here with seven ninths and eight elevenths. I guess it looks like seven ninths is bigger, but that's only because I draw so well. And <laughs> if you draw, if you actually divide out seven divided by nine, you'll see it's 0.8 which is greater than 8 divided by 11, or 0.72. Another way to compare that also makes it possible to add and subtract your fractions is creating a common denominator. And immediately when students hear common denominator, it sounds like a lot of work, and they're, why not just put everything in decimals? Well, there is a good reason for that, and that's the accuracy thing. If you look at two sevenths in your calculator, you can see it's 0.285714, and then it starts repeating this point. 2857 and on and on it goes. And same with 821s, it's a repeating decimal, and who knows how far out before you start getting repetition. One third is easy, it's just 0 0.3333. But if you had to add all three together, oh my goodness, it's much easier to add these with a common denominator as 21st and see it's just one. And it's also accurate. Uh, here, when you start rounding and all that stuff, you're going to lose information. Before we can say much about common denominators, it's hugely important that you understand what equivalent fractions are. One fourth is obviously bigger than an eighth, but if I duplicate the eighth, you can see that two eighths is the same size or equivalent to one fourth. Those are equivalents, 2 eighths and 1 fourth. We'd write that 1 fourth equals 2 eighths. But comparing something like fifths to thirds gets a little bit more complicated. In fact, what we end up doing is cutting the pieces smaller until we find a slice that matches. We can take fifths and cut them into three pieces each and come up with fifteenths. Count them. 
one fifth two three four five fifths is the same as three fifteenths. One fifth is the same as three fifteenths. Five fifths is the same as fifteen fifteenths. Go ahead and play with that idea. See if you can pull it, pull it together. Over here, the thirds, if I count each one of these pieces, you'll see I have five pieces in each third. That's a total of 15. Look, I have 15 again. One third is the same as five fifteenths, and one fifth is the same as three fifteenths. See if you can put your uh, mind around that and get this idea of equivalent sizes, equivalent pieces. We can't compare fifths and thirds very well. If I, if I double the fifths, it's too big. If I half the thirds, it's too small. But if I put them both into fifteenths, I have a fair comparison. I can compare three fifteenths with five fifteenths. I can compare one fifteenth with four fifteenths because the size of the pieces match. That's the idea of getting equivalent fractions. So how did we get from fifths to fifteenths? We cut the pieces smaller. In fact, each piece we divided by three. Dividing by three is the same as multiplying by a third. But wait a minute, I can't just corrupt my piece like that. Certainly one-fifth times a third is not equivalent to one-fifth. But if I do the same to the numerator as I do to the denominator, I'm simply multiplying by one. One fifth times one is still a fifth, but look at the way it changes the looks. One fifth and three fifteenths look a lot different, but it's the same value. We do the same to the third. We're going to multiply the third by 5 over 5, which is also 1, like this. 5 over 5, 5 divided by 5 is 1, and if I multiply straight across, I get 5 fifteenths. Now I can compare fifteenths to fifteenths. So clearly, 1 fifth, which is 3 fifteenths, is less than 1 third, that is 5 fifteenths beauty of being able to compare when your denominators match up is to multiply the two denominators that you have. Basically, you're cutting your sevenths into ten pieces and your tenths into seven pieces, and either way, you're going to get seventieths. Now, of course, you can't just say 3 sevenths is the same as 3 seventieths. That doesn't make sense. Pieces are much smaller here. What did you do to get the seventieths when you were starting off with sevenths? Well, what you did was you multiplied your seven by the ten. And what you do to the denominator, you have to do to the numerator. So let's do that. Let's multiply the denominator by 10, but also the numerator. We know this is legal to do this. We're not changing the value of 3 sevenths because we're just multiplying by 1. 10 divided by 10 is 1. 1 times 3 sevenths is 3 sevenths. But we dramatically change the way it looks. 3 sevenths becomes 30 seventieths. And if you take your hand and cover the zeros, you can see three sevenths hiding in there. Multiplied by 10 over 10 is 30 seventieths. And so what did we do to the tenths to turn them into seventieths? Well, we would have to multiply by 7. So what we do to the denominator, we do to the numerator, so we don't corrupt our fractions. We cannot pretend that 4 tenths is the same as 4 seventieths. It's not. You have to multiply the numerator by the same number you multiplied the denominator by, and you get 28 seventieths. Now you can clearly see
that the left fraction is bigger than the right. In math world, rather than write out the left fraction is bigger than the right, we simply use this lovely shorthand greater than 30 sevenths, sevenths is greater than 28 sevenths. By that same token, we can say that 3 sevenths is greater than 4 tenths. Now, finding a, con a common denominator, it always works to multiply these two, and that can be your common denominator. You can multiply 3 by 11, 77 by 11, and then 5 by 77, 11 by 77. You can get a common denominator doing that. However, you've probably also heard about least common denominator, because if we actually multiply 77 times 11, you get 847, <laughs> which is not a very friendly number. Instead, if you know a little bit about multiplication facts, you know that 11 times 7 is 77. If you don't know that, now is a good time to memorize your multiplication facts. You can do that. I guarantee you, if, if you were in my class, you are capable of multiplying your, getting your multiplication facts down, and I advise you to do it now. Um, better late than never, but the longer you put it off, the more agony you're in the rest of the year and years to come. So please take care of that if that's something you haven't done yet. Okay, but back to the idea that instead of getting this humongous number, 847, let's just multiply the top and bottom, numerator denominator, by sevens. And what do you get but 35 sevenths. Not a bad number to work with at all. And then you just compare with the three 77 that you already have, and clearly the 377 is a whole lot smaller than the 3577s. In the case of comparing ninths with sixths, again, you could go with 54, but that's kind of an ugly number. Um, a smaller, the, the least common de denominator would be, well, let's see. This is divisible by 3, and so is that. And so you have a common factor here. You don't have to go as big as 54, so let's think about what could be smaller. Well, 2 times 9 is 18. And if you think about it, 3 times 6 is 18. Why not use 18 Since you know both 9 and 6 go into 18, and that's the smallest thing they both go into, it's a much nicer number. In fact, you just end up comparing 8 eighteenths with 3 eighteenths, and clearly the 4 ninths is larger, greater than the 1 sixth. The key thing to remember is that in order to change your denominator, you have to multiply the numerator by the same amount. Once you have that down, you have a skill that is transferable to a, a multitude of different things in math. So, um, oops, did that one wrong, didn't I? That one goes over here. And the 4 ninths, you would multiply by 2 over 2. Like that. There you get 18 There you get 18 Now it's time to start practicing.